All right, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for Hack the Exhibitor Mindset. Really pumped to be here with Jim Cermak. I'm Joe Colangelo, co-founder and CEO of Bear Analytics. We've been doing these Wednesday webinars now going on eight or nine months or so. Um, so thank you all for those of you that have returned. If you're a first timer, thanks for joining us. Super pumped. It's a good first time episode. If you're joining us for the first time, super excited to welcome Jim. Before we get into intros on Jim's side for a second, ask us any questions. Put it in the chat. Put it in the questions chat. We're going to take those in as near real time as possible. Jim, welcome. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Joe, thanks so much. Uh, for me, I am a, the podcast host of the Trade Show University podcast. I I am a trade show veteran of 30 years or more. <laughs> I've done hundreds of trade shows. I love trade shows, which is the weirdest thing to say ever. But uh, it's just something that fires me up every time I have a chance to talk about trade shows because I, I have a, I'm a background in marketing been in marketing my entire career is obviously trade shows for a lot of companies they see you know, that's part of your marketing mix but i have found and i would argue this with anybody trade shows are the most effective and most efficient marketing tool available to any company out there period bar none so uh hopefully some of that will come come through today but uh, that's uh, that's why i'm here and just really really happy to uh, to have this conversation with you well, I love how you're just leading right with the the right hook right out of the gate. You're like, come at me, right? And you got the street cred behind you. You got like 15 badges just hanging there. You're like, I practice what I preach. Boom. Yeah, it's a small portion of the collection. <laughs> it's well, my battle wounds. You know, the battle scar yeah. is going through it. Well, Anyone who's worked a trade show knows you got a little battle, uh, some battle scars uh, going through these things. They're, they can be brutal at times, but man, so worthwhile and so fulfilling, at least for me. And hopefully that so, will make it for you as well. I have no doubt about that. So we're getting into really the mindset. So just to prep today's discussion, we're we're taking a, an empathetic approach instead of talking about you know how do I juice exhibitor sales from the the salesperson's perspective, the tactical perspective, the strategic perspective. We're flipping it on its head, and we're getting into the customers perspective. So pro, a perspective exhibitor, perspective sponsor, you spend a lot of time being on that side of the aisle, so to speak. And you do a, you, you've do you broken this down into key areas that today's trade show professional should really be focusing on to do a better job of getting in that, the mindset of their perspective customer. So I'm just going to kind of set the table there um, and talk to us, Jim, about what we as event organizers, we as event or exhibit salespeople need to be thinking about um, to get into that exhibitor mindset. Yeah, that's a great jumping off point. Yeah, you know, I, I want you, everyone who's an, an event professional, you put on, put on these events, these trade shows, and you've got exhibitors, you've got the expo hall, and that typically, you know, that and your sponsorships, which are also come from your exhibitors, pay for the entire event right and this in a lot for a lot of comp organizations for a lot of uh, show organizers this could be the big money maker of the year and at every show you have uh you have some exhibitors that are over the moon this was fantastic they're coming up they're giving you hugs they're naming their kids after you because of they just had they just rocked it and then you've got other exhibitors who just disappear they, they, you don't talk to them, they leave and they don't renew. And you're like, what happened? How did, how do I have these, this huge difference, this chasm between this uh, one company that rocked it and the other company that, that uh, just came in one timer and they're gone. And that's what you don't want. What we want to do is you want to increase that renewal rate, right? Because if you can increase that, I mean, that's just talking bottom line dollars. Because uh, the the expenses per exhibitor are pretty minimal once you've got your your base costs covered for your event. So what I, I want everyone to uh, consider is and assume I need, need to make this assumption. Assume that your exhibitors don't have a clue how to run a trade show, how to, not how to run it from your standpoint, but how to work a trade show to get to have a successful show. 
just assume they have no clue how to do that. And if you do go ahead with that assumption, now you're in a place of, well, okay, how do I help them have a better show? Because if they come out of that show and they have hit their goals, they've got, you know, they see potential either they've got, you know, a ton of leads, qualified leads, they've made sales there at the show, depending on what kind of show you have, if sales are possible at the show, then they're going to want to come back again next year because that one was so good. And guess what? Next year, this year I had a 10 by 10 because my first time, now I'm going to maybe move 10 by 20, maybe even a 20 by 20, depending on what I want to do. And and guess what? Uh, they're going to be reaching out and saying, what kind of, what kind of sponsorships uh, do you have available for me this time? So you've now turned someone that say, say a $5,000 spend into a $20,000 spend with you next year because they had such great re results. But how do you do that? And that's, I guess that's what we're here today is to, is to really find out and tap into it. But I think it starts with that assumption that they don't know how to work a show. And I would guess that majority of exhibitors, if you ask them if they know how to work the show, they, say, they would say, yes, they do. But I will tell you, <laughs> Working with enough exhibitors, even longtime exhibitors that go to the same show every year, they don't know how to work a show. They just, they don't. Um, oh, and okay. of course, I'm making broad brush strokes here. Sure, sure. So if we can codify just that kind of that early preamble, because I like the, base the, the baseline that you set there. So we want to reduce churn as much as possible. We want to get people who have already come right. and experienced our experience to come back and then increase their investment. We want them to ladder up, right? The only way we can yep. get them to ladder up is is for them to have better outcomes so that we're kind of in the ROI boat together, Absolutely. so to speak. But what it, the interesting nugget there that you just mentioned or just reiterated is don't overassume they know what they're doing or don't overassume you just can just sell them the space and they're off to go. It's kind of like that's just a, maybe an early step, if not the first step, and now we have to mature them through kind mm -hmm. of their development, if you will. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go. Let's go from there then. Lead us down the path, man. I love All it. All right. All right. So I guess as as an exhibitor of hundreds of shows, uh, here's my typical uh, experience is that we sign up for the show. We figure out, okay, what size booth we want. Sign up for the show. We get an, we get an, a prospectus thrown at us with kind of a, hey, good luck and, and help, let us know if you have any questions. And then that's a lot of times that is the last point of communication I even have. No one comes back. Do you have any questions? What can we help you with? I, you know, are you struggling with anything? There's none of that. So first make it simple, especially for the first timers to figure out what do I need for my booth? Do I, do I have to pay extra for carpeting? Do I have to, you know, all the logistics stuff of it. And that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Uh, be, but just make it simple for me to get what I need for the basics of, okay, I've got all the paperwork done. I've got everything done. Now I'm ready. I've got my booth. But the next thing is, how do you know if you're an exhibitor and, or if you're a show planner, how do you know if you had a successful event? You know it because you have set some goals. You have set goals, you know your metrics, and at the end of it, you either, you have something you've been able to measure, you've got data that says, okay, we had we had a goal for 5,000 attendees, we had 5,700, boom, we hit it, and we, we exceeded it by 12% or whatever that is. So you have that metric. Your exhibitors should also need to have goals and metrics, but I'll tell you, as someone who's worked with so many uh, companies over the years, been an exhibitor myself, rarely do exhibitors have goals. They come in thinking, oh, we just, you know, we're, we're, get, we're looking to get a, a, a fishbowl's worth of business cards thrown in for people to win an iPad or something. Yeah, well, we hear a lot of goal. like, I'm here because my competitors are here. And so there's this like, yeah. we got to participate because the, yes. there's a perceived cost to not participating. Yes, and that's and that's valid too. I mean, that is the, depending on the industry and depending on who you are, um, that that could be one little part of it. But what is it at the end of the show? So for an exhibitor, they need to say what is what does success mean for me? And that really is boiling down. Okay, for my company, when I make 
what does my sales cycle look like? Okay, I, I have, uh, you know, the sales cycle is six months because we've got a high ticket item and we have a 20% closure rate typically. And, you know, so what does it look like at the show? At the show, it could be um, how far to, can I, down the sales funnel can I take my pro, can I take the attendee? You know, can I take them to the point where I'm just getting their contact information? Can I get them so I, I have them qualified? Can I get them down as far as setting a demo or, or schedule, having something scheduled before they leave the booth? Can I make a sale there at the booth? How far down can I do that? And But the, going back to the show organizer, the show planner, help them set goals. And that could be something very, very simple by sen by sending everybody a a goal sheet and cap capturing those. Say, hey, we want to get your goals for this. We want to get how many qualified leads are you trying to get? How many demos are you trying to schedule? How many you know demos are you trying to show? How many meetings? And there's a I can give you 20 different things that the company should have goals on when they're coming in. One of them is just that that base that everyone goes after. I'm either looking to get sales or leads qualified leads or badge scans, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to get. And I'm not saying one of those is the right one. If every company is going to be a little different, what there should be. But as a show organizer, if you help them at least get a captured of they're trying to get 35 qualified leads for the show, they have written down on paper and they've, or they've filled out a form and send it back to you, show organizer, here's my goal, 35 qualified leads, boom. Okay, at the end of the show, then they can they can leave going, wow, I crushed it. I had 50 qualified leads. And now if they, if they haven't renewed, this is great fodder for you to go back to them and say, hey, you had 50 qualified leads. Your, your goal was 35, wow, this is fantastic it's a no brainer to sign them up next year. But if they leave with 50 qualified leads and they don't know, and they and maybe it felt like it wasn't that great of a show, then they go on that feeling and they go, eh, you know, let's pick something else next year. Well, there's a because lot of recency bias that goes in. If even if the last day of the show yes. wasn't as good as they thought, or it was lighter, then they leave with that last kind of taste in their mouth, as opposed to going, wait a minute, two weeks ago, we thought 35 was the number. We left with 50, we only got two of those the last day. I, yes. You know, the reason I really kind of like this is because from a data perspective and speaking kind of on behalf of, you know, the event organizer side, which is usually the data perspective we all, always, uh, you know, come from, it allows the organizer to set the table around what metrics or what benchmarks. So you mentioned like, hey, are we going to do, you know, leads? Well, are we going to do, you know, number of people in dwell time in the booth? Are we going to do number of uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings that happened, you can look at your event tech stack and say, we're prepared to report out on these things. And then you can ask the exhibitor in the context of those things that you are prepared to report out on. So if they're yeah. thinking, oh, you know, it's really tough to say sales, and then you don't have a way of, of capturing their sales data. But if you have a lead retrieval and you say, let us know how many leads you have, and then you can see the number yourself, that's, to your point, that's extremely powerful when it comes to that re-engaging discussion. And benchmarking like hey you oh, had absolutely you had yes. you had 35 you might have felt like that was low but you were 10 percent in the top you know 10 or 20 percent of all 10 by 10s or all people in that area of the show floor and you could just start to add more context to that conversation yeah now and if you back it up a step because we're talking about what happened after the show but you back it yeah. up a step and if you're if you we have so much more data available to us than ever before and, and new niches and, and the ways to, ways to slice and dice is so much more available. So if you as a show organizer, figure out what are the like the top five or six metrics that you can capture at every booth if anyone's using a badge scan or if it's a virtual event, where what is the data that you're capturing for your exhibitors? And then you can go to them ahead of time and say, which of these are important to you? because these are the things we're gonna be tracking. So what, what are the things you really want us to focus on for you? Because we wanna help you maximize these things. So it's stuff you're already capturing and you're already doing. Take those right to your exhibitor and have them sign up. Yeah, this you know uh, number of uh, leads and how long they stayed in my booth. 
boom those are the two things i really want to know because that's why i know that they're they're getting good information they've, they're going through a demo whatever it is then and then after the show you can come back to them with that real-time stuff and they know that you're engaged this is going to be new to them because as an exhibitor like i said of many many years i there's times i we we sign up for the booth we go there we set up we have the entire show the multi-day show we leave we, we might have one person during the show come by everything okay great and then they're gone and that's that's the entire time we have of of uh connecting with the people from the the show if you show them that you care and this is an old eight old age old adage if people know how much you you care they they really start to care about you and you you've brought them closer and your chances of getting them to renew and and up their sponsorship and all that it just uh, just increases tremendously okay so now we're we're in the data boat with them so to speak we're yeah. we're taking a more empathetic approach. We're assuming we're setting the table on what they should be caring about. We're asking them directly, and then we're going to follow up with, "Hey, we're we're caring about the same things. We're aligned." What then? Okay, the next thing is I would just make sure that they have resources available to them, uh, because just being there at your show, your show might be the best show in the industry. That, that you are just you are bringing in more attendees the best attendees, the best quality, the, the decision makers, whatever it is, you're bringing them in. And, but just being there, okay, I have, you could have a 10 by 10, two 10 by 10s right next to each other. One crushes it, one just has a horrible show. They could be in the same industry, similar product offerings, everything. It's, it comes down to how do you work a show? It's engaging with people, okay? If, if you see, and if you just, Next time you're at a show, walk down a main aisle of a show and just, just look at the people's booths and see how they engage with you. And think about what will get me to stop and really engage. So will someone smiling at you and say, hey, how's it going? Or wow, is what a great show, huh? No, that's not going to make anybody stop and say, what do you do? I want to buy from you. You know, <laughs> just because you're smiling and nice doesn't mean people want to buy from you or engage with you. They have limited time. They don't want to be spending time on every booth. So you've got to have that one question. And you can help your, your exhibitors with this. This one or two questions that are going to stop someone in their tracks and then start that conversation. And one of those questions has to qualify them. So I'll give you a story. This is a story I share a lot because it's so powerful. I was walking, I was going through a, a show on training, massive training show for, it was, uh, I had 450 exhibitors, big show. And I'm walking past a booth, not even looking at the booth. And I hear, excuse me. And so I stop and I turn and I look. I wasn't looking at the booth and here's lesson number one don't be shy okay don't think you're bothering somebody you're there to do business just like you are and so you letting them walk by is doing them a disservice and you a disservice so she said excuse me so i turned she said do you use powerpoint for business and i had to stop and think just for a, a split second uh, yeah i use powerpoint she followed up with want well, to see something really cool I'm like, yeah, I want to see something yeah, really who says cool. No, who says no to that? Right? Right. right. So I was in there. She qualified me. Okay. Because what their company did, they did training only on PowerPoint. Nothing else. Microsoft products, PowerPoint only. And so if I said no, she would have said, oh, okay, and would have let me go, which is fine. And that's what you have, you have to do. Don't get into, you know, as, a, as an exhibitor, you don't want to get into a bad conversation uh, with someone who will never buy from you. And because on this, the flip side, if you're an attendee, you don't want to be sucked in. Yeah, because it's like this kind of, no, 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 because this kind of, tra when you think about it in like a corporate marketing stack, this kind of training doesn't exist. I can't think of like who's the professional group where, you know, kind of spring training for trade shows happens. So maybe it is <laughs> up to the organizer to extend down and say, hey, we're going to build, we're going to build your skill set. Um, to make you, you know, to to help juice your uh, your results at our at our events. Yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely and and i get it from a from a show organizer they have a million things on their plate they're not looking for more to do uh in fact they're probably trying to shed some stuff off off of their responsibility list and now adding in i have to educate my exhibitors they should know what they're doing they and if you want a better ROI for your show, you're going to help them get a better ROI by helping them figure out how to work a show. And that's where that's where the magic is. I remember having someone tell me one time, they said, Jim, if your booth didn't show up, yeah, you you show up to work this show. You you got there, you, you have to be there at 10 a.m. because the, sh the expo show floor starts at 10. You got to get there, you know, uh, get there at 10 to 10. So you get stuff put away, get yourself uh, ready ready to, to work, and you get there, and nothing's there. Your display is not there. Your literature is not there. Your Nothing is there. What do you do? Well, first, you're going to panic a little bit, and you're probably going to try and find, figure out where your stuff is. But if if you just leave there and and go into the the main uh, vestibule area and are on the phone for the next several hours trying to figure out how to get your you know where your display is at, then you've lost every opportunity that is going on at 10 a.m. because you've got people walking past your empty booth, or yeah. you could be there, you could be there and you try and find some place to uh, as long as you have a cell phone. OK, have a cell phone and people are walking by. You have a chance to engage with them and you have a story to tell. <laughs> My stuff didn't show up, but I, who, you know, wanted, why are you here? Why are you here? And you have that uh, that question that you, uh, are, you use PowerPoint or whatever your question is for your company. You have that question. You can engage people. Now you have a story to tell and you could just say, hey, and if you get down through your questions that uh, you're going to get someone qualified, you're going to find out if this is a good prospect for you that, hey, let me take a picture of your, of your badge. Do you have a business card? Let's, you know, let me go grab one of your business cards so I can get back to you after this and stop back later. Maybe our booth will be here. You know, and uh, now I mean, you've made a connection whether your booth is there or not. Yeah, I understand your point about we're not you know, event organizers certainly have enough on their plate, but from what you're talking about, I'm seeing like three to four, you know, two to three minute videos where you can kind of walk them through these like little trainings on how to, you know, how to figure out what your qualifying questions are, right? Yeah. How to have that booth presence to get people to talk through, um, you know, what you yeah, do. I really like the example of pretend you there's no, I mean, that's such a great thought exercise. Of like forget everything else now it's just like you know you in the wild what do you do <laughs> yeah because your booth is actually a crutch that's there to help you that's there as support it's your people the people that are going to make or break your booth make or break your show they're the ones that hit the goals not your booth your your people are there even if you have kiosks there that are capturing information for people to go up and take surveys and put whatever stuff in there it's the people that are going to guide hey get over here because if you you give us your information we're going to send you a <laughs> gift or we're gonna, you know whatever you know that the benefit is for them to to sign up and give you give you their information it's the people that are going to lead that and make that happen so that you don't just get the casual person walking up there but you actually get the the right people walking up there and know what they're what they're in for but yeah going back to your point i mean this is something i've helped with clients with is is coming up with that list of the quest of not just the the intro questions you have that of what are the top 20 questions that people normally ask you at shows and make sure everybody in your booth is well versed on those answers so that you don't have to go oh let me see i think bob knows that answer let's oh where's bob oh he's at lunch oh you know don't don't be that you know but be well versed on at least some cursory basic information about your company and those those questions that come in so you could be that that resource for them and you can keep that conversation going in a positive way so those kind of little tools are are available that's stuff that that i help uh, companies with all the time all right wait a minute i got two i got two things there that i, I want to unpack a little bit because the, the what you yeah. just said was it sounds like we're really starting to conceptualize around what is the like attendee user experience in your booth so yeah, if you were a product journey, company, yeah. right, do you want the first thing they do is, I can't log in. I don't know what my password is. Like, you're like, let's reduce the friction to that, right? Yeah. 
So that that's a real that's really interesting. I've never heard anyone kind of like frame it like that before. And then going back to something you said, where for especially for first time exhibitors, make it simple. And then you talked about some of the carpet yeah. and things like that on the operation side. So are you suggesting like the the organizer should should try to bundle uh, some of those things together so it's more of a you know kind of one price but also one size fits all like here's how to get started quickly in our event or did I was I reading too far down the line on that one no that's that's a great way to 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 think about it I would love to see more bundling happening but I think even more just make it simple make it so carpet is required so either if you if you don't order carpet you're going to have an empty cement square on the floor that is not going to look very good unless you bring your own floor and some and some companies do they bring their own flooring they you know whatever they bring the special those carpet squares they're real squishy or whatever to make it to go along but i have been to multiple shows where i've seen i there's that all the carpets laid down there's an empty cement square and people walking up with their display pieces and horrified going where's the carpet did yeah. you order carpet? I thought there was I thought carpet was included. So just simple things like that that says, you know, maybe walking through questions. Do you need Wi-Fi? Yes or no? If so, you know, boom. Okay, here's your here's your Wi-Fi selections. Do you need electricity? Yes or no? Okay, here's your choices. And you know, here's the amperage. Here's you know where can we drop it in the booth for you? You know, the little di diagram for that. Whatever it is, just walk them through the basics. Make it simple. Make it simple for them uh, to to help figure out that stuff. And then if you have a virtual event, definitely, definitely make a mandatory uh, walkthrough of the of the platform. So they know how do I how do I engage with people? How do I set do a, do instant Zoom meetings or whatever that platform has? How do I do all of this stuff? So there's no questions. Maybe have multiple sessions of that because there's nothing more frustrating than not knowing how do I, this person is trying to link up with me on a Zoom and I have no idea what to do. So make sure you're doing that. And even at a live event, walk people through, have a mandatory a Zoom call ahead of time with all the pertinent information, make sure people are all on the same page so that it's it's a no brainer. They're, they're, they show up and they are ready to rock. So it's going, it sounds like the thesis or the ethos here is going from sales and you got to get into really like the customer support client service kind of arena. You got to take it that much further to differentiate your event from competitors events. Because I mean, from what we're seeing in the marketplace, and if you believe anything on what's going on in the macro financial side, I think we're, there's definitely going to be winners and losers from an event standpoint, companies are going to be making more judicious and data-driven decisions in the next, let's call it 18 to 24 months, if it hasn't already Absolutely. started. Yeah, analytics rules, analytics rules. And and right now, companies are, they're, depending on what industry you're in, there's companies that are looking, how do we scale? How do we scale back, I should say? How do we scale back? And uh, if you think about, oh, geez, from a, from a company leadership, if I'm an exhibitor, I've got to convince my leadership that we have to go to the show. Maybe, okay, maybe if it's a first time to, we're ever going to the show, I've got to convince them. So what they're thinking of when I come back, they're gonna be asking, what do we get from that show? And they're not looking for, oh, wow, we made a connection with this company, or we, we were able to have lunch with this guy. That might be nice stuff to know, but they're looking for, what are our sales? What sales are we getting? What's our ROI on that show? That's what they're looking for. So you've got to help them to, to uh, set those goals so they can come back with a significant story to tell their, their leadership if they need their permission to up, renew for next year. Awesome. Is, awesome. Is key. They, Jim, any closing words? I can't believe we're already at the bottom half of oh, the hour here. Wow. Okay. Just like that. <laughs> as promised. As promised. How can folks oh, get man. a hold of you? Oh, just uh, if you go to my website is tradeshowu.biz, tradeshow the letter U dot B I Z, uh, or if, and I've got a hundred and eighty some episodes of Trade Show University. Every single one of them is a different topic, and it's all around helping show planners and helping exhibitors uh, get better results 
a better ROI from their shows. So go to go to tradeshowu.biz. You can hook up with me on LinkedIn at uh, Jim Cermak uh, on LinkedIn. So I'd love to connect with you there. But uh, the Trade Show University website. And if you go there, what's going to pop up on the screen first time you go, one of those little annoying pop-up uh, boxes that says, hey, sign up for our, our email newsletter. And I just dropped a brand new uh, video training. It's how to pick the right show or how do you if you already picked a show how do you know it's the right show for you so this is really geared at exhibitors but a little secret uh, side conversation here for show planners it gives you the secret sauce on how to help your exhibitors potential exhibitors pick your show as the right show because i and go so through jim what's that like uh, is that like a hundred bucks how much are you selling that for no that's yeah, value of uh, un priceless value, Joe. Priceless value. Priceless no, could, value, absolutely free. You're giving it away. Absolutely, giving it away. Just sign up for the email newsletter. You have immediate access to that training, and it is it's uh, it's powerful. It could be very very powerful for you as a show organizer to get those questions that you can walk your exhibitors through and help them to understand why your show is the right show. So if that doesn't tell you how passionate Jim is about trade shows, he's <laughs> literally doing hundreds of podcasts. He's giving away the keys to the castle on how he talks to his exhibitor clients. Jim, thanks very much for being here today. We appreciate you sharing your insights. We love having you as a channel partner for Bear Analytics and our Bear IQ platform. And just as a reminder, we're growing the list of integrations for Bear IQ. So if you're looking to do more with the data you're already collecting, give us a call or email me. I'm Joe at bearanalytics.com. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Joe. See you, Jim.